Should I make them all come down here and then say, hey, we're going to do one more song and make them all go back up again? Amen. Woo. Wonderful worship team. Thank you very much. You know, the nice thing about it, they do it in a second. Amen. I'll tell you what, I, got, I, got, I get this feeling that we need a breakthrough today. I don't know what it is, but something has been just on my spirit while we were singing and playing and and a breakthrough. Some of us, including myself, have trouble breaking through some of the things that, that may have happened to us when we were young. And, you know, in our lives, we have these things that hold on to us. Things that cling to us. Like dust. Like a mosquito that we can't get rid of. Ever been sleeping and you that mosquito you can't get rid of? Amen. In that breakthrough, you know, that comes that comes to us in our lives and we decide, when we finally decide in ourselves, we want that breakthrough. We finally decide in ourselves that it's time. God kind of likes to push us into that time a little bit, but he's not going to move until we say move. Not that we're giving God orders. Not that we're giving God orders, but we finally decided to submit upon the Lord. And say, Father God, I've submitted. Now move. That's kind of like in our joy. You know, a lot of people talk about joy. The Bible talks about rejoicing all the time. The joy of the Lord is our strength. You know, that's what we're going to talk about today. If we want a breakthrough in our life, first we've got to have a joy inexplainable to keep us from going backward. You all understand what I'm talking about here in a minute. Amen? That joy that we strive for. What's that breakthrough we need? What is it that we need? We are all looking for joy even to the point of being miserable. Don't we? We try so hard for joy, but it's always one step ahead of us, and we can't seem to just grasp it and take a hold of it. Amen? Most times we're looking for our joy on our own. We're looking for that joy sustainable. But all we can find is Happiness unsustainable. Amen. There's, a, there's a difference. What makes me happy? You know, if we have joy, joy can help us lose weight, lower our stress, lower our risk of heart attack, improve blood pressure, boost immune system, help us focus, improve memory, serve others more, make us content. I sound like an infomercial now, don't I? Here's a packet of joy. For $19.99, you can have all the joy you want. Amen? Don't you wish it was that easy? I can whip out my credit card, get on there, swipe it, and I've got joy. Joy is something we have to work at. I know a lot of you are saying, Pastor, you keep talking about having to work at all this stuff. I'm tired already. Amen? We have to work at this stuff. Let's get, let's get into this, okay? Joy. The joy most look for is unattainable in this world. Okay? First and foremost, we've got to understand that. Excuse me. The world is not going to give us joy. The world can give us happiness. They can give us happiness, but that you can't sustain happiness because the other side of happiness is sad. <coughs> Excuse me. Is sadness. 
Okay? Or happy, 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 sad. All right? Happy, 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 sad. Oh, this is great. I love my job until something comes along to rip that happiness right out of our hands. And it doesn't have to be anything big. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. It can be somebody saying to you, you know, you're not very good at this. Hmm? Hmm? That can take our happiness away just like that. <coughs> we seek happiness, and most things we, we think will make us happy are fleeting. That is why we choose happiness over joy. Why do we choose happiness over joy? Why do we choose the fleeting over, over the eternal? Why do we do that? I want to tell you why. Happiness is easier to attain than joy. Okay? It's easier to attain. <coughs> somebody makes a joke. Somebody says something. Somebody does something that makes you happy. Somebody washes your car for you. Somebody mows your lawn for you. That makes us happy. And we are happy, but we do not sustain that because our car gets dirty again and our grass gets long again. And then we have to just start all over with that to cut our grass and wash our car. Amen? Boy, it is dry up here. We have to understand happiness is good, but happiness, happiness is a building block to joy. Okay? It's a building block to joy, which joy is a building block to our faith. And our faith being sustainability. Okay? Let's go to, let's prove some of this with scripture here. I've been talking long enough here. Let's go to James, James, uh, James first chapter, 2 and 3. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. So, not having joy means I cannot attain what? I cannot attain, attain faith and produce patience. Because I did not do that with joy. I did not use something sustainable to get to where I want to be in my relationship with God. Okay? I'm happy that I have a relationship with God. I'm happy that I'm a that I'm saved through Jesus Christ. I'm happy about that. But how can I have joy in this? Because joy comes in, they say, comes in the morning. Joy is what sustains our faith. Joy is what we take with us in the hard times that sustains us. Our joy in the Lord, not our joy in the earth not our joy in our children, in our family. No, that is fleeting. Our family is fleeting. Soon we'll be apart from our family. Like it or not. The greatest joy in life is my children. <coughs> yes, my children make me happy. But soon my children grow up. They move out of the house and they not are not in my life all the time. So that's not joy. My children make me happy. The joy that sustains us is the joy in the Lord which does not leave our house. Amen. Let's go to Let's go to Let's keep talking. Joy is a building block or a tool, as you will, to replace doubt in our faith. 
joy is something that we hang on to in the bad times, the joy in the Lord that pulls us through, which builds our ultimate goal, and that is our faith. Okay? It is something we hang on to when no, there's nothing else to hang on to. Seriously, church, if we are truly looking for control in our own lives, what a better way to choose the joy of the Lord. But pastor, you said give, give God all control. That is controlling your life. My, I'm controlling my destiny by giving my life and giving my joy to Jesus Christ because I know this is eternal. So I am taking control. Aren't we? Because we've chosen. And the love of God lets us choose. And I choose joy in the Lord. Joy is something that we can control. We can choose joy in the Lord, or we can choose not to. Didn't think you had that much power, did you? We can choose. God gave us a choice in our joy. We can have happiness which we're chasing all the time. I can't find happiness. So we, in our happiness, we substitute things so we can force happiness on our lives. I feel empty. So methamphetamine fills that void. Right? I feel empty. So my sexual exploits fill that void. Joy is when you let God fill that void. And everybody has it. Everybody has a void in their life. I don't know about you, but there's been times in my life where I go, what else is there? Where did my joy go? Where did my happiness go? My happiness left me like gone in 60 seconds. Well, what I love about joy and the joy in the Lord, it may seem <coughs> like it left you, but in that second, all you have to do is ask for it. happiness we strive for, joy we ask God to return to us. Amen. We return our joy by asking God, please, please return my joy. Amen? <coughs> Let's go to uh, 1 Peter 1, 6 through 9. In this you greatly rejoice. Through now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. These things that come up against us, they keep pushing us. They keep trying to remove our joy. Once we have that joy, the enemy is so intent on taking that joy away because if he can take that joy away, he can, ta he can take away your sustainability in this world to stay with Jesus Christ. That the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes through it is tested by fire may be found to, found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love. Through now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. I rejoice in the Lord. I have not seen Jesus Christ face to face, but I have done something better than seeing him face to face. It's like happiness. I want to see what I'm getting. I want to see it to prove it. But we are in Jesus Christ who we have not seen 
and take joy in because the sustainability of eternal life moves us more than the happiness of two or three seconds. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So we take joy in the Lord because we know that in the end game we are going to heaven. We take joy in the Lord because we know that he is going to be there at the end saying, good and faithful servant, please enter my house. That is our joy. The joy sustainability. Happiness moves us little step, little step, little step, going a little left, going to the right, tossed to and fro by every wave of doctrine. But the joy in the Lord keeps us on a straight line knowing where we're going to be tomorrow I don't know where I'm going to be except one thing if it just happens that I die tomorrow I'm going to be in heaven with Jesus Christ that is for sure that is the joy that we hang on to amen that is the joy happiness is I woke up this morning the joy is knowing that if I wouldn't have God's with me. One way or another. Amen? Let's put the icing on the cake here. We choose joy of the Lord over our depression, our anger, our anxiety. This is a learned response, church. This is something we have to learn how we do, how to, how to do. Okay? is grabbing for that joy. All right, We have to learn how to do it. We are not born with this ability. This ability first comes from saying, Jesus Christ, yes. And then it builds upon that <coughs> Excuse me, by reading the Word, praising God, and prayer. Simple conversations. We build that build it. Joy gives us strength. Joy gives us the opportunity to be saved. The opportunity to be saved. Think about that. Instead of turning to our anger, our anxiety, our depression in situations, we turn to God. That's what joy does for us. I do not turn to my sexual exploits. I turn to God. I do not turn to methamphetamines or cocaine or marijuana. I turn to God. I don't, I don't attain that perfection. But it's fun knowing that in the end, I will have that perfection. I take joy in the fact that, you know what? I'm trying. I take joy in the fact that God has given me the courage to move forward when normally I wouldn't. Amen? God gave me the courage and the joy in the Lord preach the word which normally I wouldn't God gave me the joy in the Lord to teach Sunday school when normally I wouldn't God gave me the joy in the Lord to be kind and loving when normally I wouldn't it's our strength As we build and we rebuild, in most cases, we get a little stronger. Okay? It takes time. It takes time to build that relationship. Alright? Jesus Christ trusts us. Okay? We don't trust Him enough to give Him our joy. 
Isn't that something? That's our choice. We talked about a choice, didn't we? What is our choice? I choose sustainability. Hanging on to joy in the Lord gives us the courage to move on. To move on. To move on to the, from a situation that may have been devastating to us. We have that courage because we have that joy. Amen? Boldness in our faith. Boldness in our faith to stand steadfast when situations and when we're on an island all by ourselves and they are all surrounding us. The steadfastness is caused from the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Wisdom in our actions. The joy of the Lord gives us wisdom in our actions that we do not act rashly in, in situations that are giving us the anxiety beyond anxiety. The joy in the Lord gives us that courage and that steadfastness and that wisdom to act accordingly to the Word of God. Joy in the Lord conquers fear. Our greatest enemy in our walk with Jesus Christ. It conquers fear. I'm not going to go to church anymore because I just don't feel right there. That's the fear. That's the fear. The fear of I may actually have to change because I've accepted something in my life that is greater than me. Amen. We break out of that shell because of the joy of the Lord. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 6.10. As sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing all things. I have nothing in this world, but I possess all things because I have joy in the Lord. I possess all things because I have an end game that says I am saved. I possess all things because I am going to heaven. Nothing else matters. Possessions of this world don't matter. I possess all things. Let's see it again. Possessing all things. Having nothing. No money. No food. No clothes. No friends. And yet possessing all things. Because I believe and I have joy in the Lord. I believe in Jesus Christ. He is my Savior and King. All these things I do not need. Because it does not help me in my end game of salvation. I will not let any of those things affect my joy in the Lord. I will not let it affect my end game. Go to Nehemiah 8.10. Then he said to them, go, go your way. Eat the fat. Drink sweet. And then portions to those whom, are, whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. He start talking about, in, in Nehemiah, they're talking about one day. I'm talking about every day. Every day is the joy of the Lord. Every day we will eat the sweet. Every day we will know that the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I will wake up every day saying, Father God, this is a holy day that you have given to me. I will live it to my best ability in Jesus Christ. Amen. That's exciting. I'm getting emotional right now. Just thinking of the possibilities. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always. Rejoice always. Oh, but man, I owe taxes to the government. I'll rejoice. 
you know, I, 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 did, I made a mistake. I, I, I yelled at my mom, rejoice. I yelled at my dad, rejoice. I yelled at my kids, rejoice. I've got this, I got this knee aching, the shoulder aching, rejoice. Can't pay the electric bill, rejoice. And don't rejoice because you want it paid. Rejoice anyway. I'm rejoicing for an agenda. No. I am rejoicing just because God is great. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And everything give thanks for this is the will of God and Jesus Christ for you. What is that will? I'll tell you what that will is. Eternal life. It is salvation that he wants for you. Pray without ceasing every morning. Thank you, God, for waking me up. This day is holy upon the Lord, and I will live it to the best of my ability in Jesus Christ, and I will live it in repentance because I am not perfect, but you love me anyway, and I will take joy in that. Amen. My missteps, I will take joy in because I learned something in Jesus Christ. Church, if we want to move forward in our relationship with Jesus Christ, we got to hang on to our joy in the Lord with everything we've got with everything we can muster all our praise all our prayer reading the word of god i don't care if you have a single verse that you like so much read it every day there's a single song you like sing it every day if your prayer in the morning is just father god thank you lord jesus said the long prayers don't mean nothing anyway there's one important thing, one, one important thing only. God, God, the greatness of you, the glory to you, that's the important thing, that I live this day glorifying you and you only. And I will take joy in that no matter what happens on the way. I will ride that wave of joy. Amen? Whew, I'm sweating up here. Praise God. It's available. And not for $19.99. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your joy. Father, your joy gives us the courage, gives us the strength, gives us the motivation that we need to move forward in Jesus Christ. Joy inexplainable. Knowing that we don't have to explain it. It just is. Father God, we ask in the name of Jesus as we go out these doors today. Right now, Father God, we're walking on water. We walk out these doors, Father. Sustain us. We are searching for your sustainability, Father. We are grabbing a hold of it in Jesus' name. We are moving forward in it in Jesus' name. And in you, we will not fail. And we praise you for it. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Everybody have a great week. Hey, you know what? Let's give a clap to God. You know what? Let's move out of here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you very much for coming. Everybody have a great week.